Okay, we're on page. Okay, I'm called. Today is what? Today is Sunday. Ches. Kislev. Tomorrow and Tuesday is a Yom Tif. Tess and Yud Kislev. The Yemaletas, the Stalkas of the Mitle Rebbe is Tess Kislev. And Yud Kislev is the Chaga Geul of the Mitle Rebbe. Now, we're doing Dalad Nissen. Okay, this was the page you didn't have last week, but I managed to find time to make the copies. So it's the second entry on page Membeis, which you really cannot see the page now. But Dalad Nissen. If you can't find it, please ask your neighbor. Yom Shishi. Dalad Nissen. Hey, Tav Shem Gimel. Shurim Chumish Tazir Yashishim Pirish Rashi. Tilim Chal Gimel Til Chav Ches. Tanya Okusha Eiseg Okmechikosa Bezeyed. Avedas Balei Asokim. The work of a business person. Of a lay person, as they call it in some cultures. A yid who's not directly involved in Avedas HaKedosh. Mishalekas Lishnei Seifim Ikriyim is divided up into two basic uh, paragraphs or sections or levels or steps. A business person, a lay person has to know that as much as he's a yid is concerned, he has two things that he has to bear in mind, so to speak. And of course, the premise of this Hayyam Yayim, like everything else in the Rebbe's writings is, they were all servants of the Ebishter. Servants of the Ebishter is not something which is left to rabbis and Ashishivis and Mashpiyim and Shochtim and Malamdim. Every Yid is a servant of the Ebishter, and each one or each Chassid, him or her, in his or her own way, has to serve the Ebishter based on the the Maimed Matzah that the Ebishter gave them by Shkach HaPratis, having Tanya Deloshin. Kifi Madre Gosei, Kifi Maisa. The life that we live is a reflection of our level. In other words, the neshama the Ebish gave us. The way we've lived our lives, the choices that we've made. But every person, no matter where they are, at any moment in their lives, is a servant of the Ebish, including a balabas. Aleph. A yid who's involved in business has an avayda with himself, has his own personal avayda, which is... That be'ez hasake mamish, even while he's in the middle of his business, his work. Be'shoap nuyev, he has free time. Be'yashay b'chanus, he's sitting in a store, okadeim and so forth. So yilmedu mishnah mishnayis, we should learn a mishnah mishnayis and a peidik of tanya. And again, I'm not a, a an expert, I'm not a novi, but mepashtas. The Rebbe is saying, learn something easy. You know, start learning a blat gemara. You won't get any place. You'll start the same piece of Gemara every single morning. A Mishnah Mishnah is a din. Mishnah is part of Allah. Mishnah is Allah Psukha. You can finish a Mishnah in a few minutes. You can finish a Pedic Tanya in a few minutes. In addition, every person should have some words of Tera. For example, Mishnah Mishnah is Tilim Tanya. We should all memorize something from Tera. Chumash, Mishnah, Tilim, or Tanya. We should be able to chazad them when he's walking in the street. Bishuk in the market, the Kadeim, and so forth. Now, of course, this, there's two in Yonim in this. You know, we, we've had a number of Hayyim Yayims where we've had the opportunity to explore the idea of Taras Ha'avid. When the Fidi Kebel came to America, one of his first campaigns, one of his earliest, earliest efforts, one of his first endeavors, was Mishnayis Balpeh. And Machane Yisro, which was then a very functional organization, very active organization. So the organization, Machane Yisro, used to have what's called Chalukas Mishnayis Balpeh. They would divide up the Mishnayis Balpeh in such a way that every person who was a member would get two or three Mishnayis. So if they had 400 people who registered for Chazaras Mishnah is Balpeh, they would divide up the Shas Mishnah into 400 parts. Mamish, a Mishnah or two or three. And every year, Er Vashchedesh Sivan, I don't know why, but that was the Seder. Er Vashchedesh Sivan, they would make a Siyah Mishnah is, and they'd make a new Chalukah. They would again make a Goidel. They would, they, would, they would figure out how many members there were to the Chavra Mishnah is Balpeh. And accordingly, they would divide up the Mishnah is into this many parts. And everyone would learn those Mishnahis. And the idea was that you had the same two, three Mishnahs, that for the entire year, whenever you were walking in the street or sitting on a resistant subway, Megate and Gas, Meshtate and Krom, you know, it's interesting that the Friedrich Rebbe used many more English words in his speech than the Rebbe did. L'chede, we should be fakir. 
The Friedrich Rebbe used English expressions. You look in the Sikhs, see it clearly. Use English expression much more frequently than the Rebbe did. This is this is the Rebbe. This is Svei Rebbe, Svei Welten. This in Slavve, Megait in Gas, Mishtait in Storz, in Krum. The idea of Chazring Mishnah is Balper. And of course, there's the beautiful little one line letters in the Friedrich Rebbe, printed in Nigger's Kedish. El Hanholas, Chevre, Mishnah is Balper, Shayad, Machne Yisrael, Yitzuv. He's writing letters to downstairs. You understand? The Rebbe's upstairs. And Machne Yisrael is downstairs, and he writes them an official letter that they should tell him what are his Mishnayis. He wants to memorize his Mishnayis by heart, the Friedrich Rebbe. He was also a member of Mishnayis. And the Rebbe went in the street, took his Mishnayis Balpeh. I mean, the Rebbe, at 11 years old, was a book in Mishnayis Balpeh. Shas, or whatever, at least five Sadarim. So it wasn't exactly that he was memorizing at the age of 62 or 63 years old. But still, he also participated in the Chevron Mishnayis Balpeh. But that was for a special purpose. The Avir. The Rebbe said that the, uh, the Avir in America is shtikidik. The air in America is suffocating. You, can, you, can, you can't breathe. You can choke. And the Rebbe said you have to make a campaign the to purify the air. And the way to do this, that people should walk in the streets and chazni mishnah is balper. A few years later, a few years later, the same Friedrich Rebbe says you can already begin to breathe. In other words, the Friedrich Rebbe was a Rebbe. And his whole world was Ruchnius Nelikus. He, he sensed what America was. He created Pu'ulas. He created Mifzayim, if you will. He created efforts to change America. And as America changed, he acknowledged the change. The Ruchnius that changes. I, I've told this to you on a number of previous occasions. Also, this, you'll never hear this kind of stuff on the Rebbe. The Friedrich was, I came to America, and America was a block of ice, solid ice, he says. Durgang in a a few years later, he says, remember a few years ago I told you that's a kerach, he says, in the ice we can see cracks. <laughs> and a few years after that, he says, in the cracks in the ice you can see running water. And then a few years after this, he says, and you're seeing the ice start to move. You know, you ever see how a lake melts? How a lake, a big lake or a big river in, in northern <laughs> climates freezes, then it melts in the spring, yeah? So first it says cracks. And then you see water in the cracks. And there's enough room for the ice to actually start to move. When the ice starts to move, that's the breakup. That's when it really melts quickly. So the Rebbe used to be metayed and sikhs. You could follow it. Tavshin and Tavshin Gimel and Tavshin Vav and Tavshin Ches. This is the style of the Fenidic Rebbe, which was very far into our Rebbe. To use very artistic, very um, visual kinds of images to describe Inyanim Ruchni, Inyanim Pnimi. This is Mishnah Yisbalpeh. Here the Rebbe is not talking only about that. Here the Rebbe is simply talking about the job of a Yid. A Yid has to be busy. Busy with Yiddishkeit all the time. It's very difficult to be busy with Yiddishkeit all the time if your life is not Yiddishkeit. If a person has the good fortune that his home it's in Yiddishkeit, but a person whose life is not strictly Yiddishkeit because there's other obligations and other responsibilities and other priorities and other interests and so forth and so on, He's not fortunate enough that his whole mitzvah is a of mitzvah. So what happens then? There is a you're also a servant of the Ebsht. How? I'm sure you have to have shiurim. But even when you're doing your lay activities, you're doing your business, or you're doing your um, umnas, your craft, when you have free time, learn a little teda, say a pedic mishnayis. And when you walk in the street, chaz mishnayis valpeh. It's so simple when the Rebbe says it. To do it as god agvalik edelkeit. I mean, to do this... It's not hard, but it's, it's about a sensitivity. It's about uh, a cognizance. It's about an awareness. This is not such difficult stuff, but to do it, but pay, uh, there were storekeepers in Kingston Avenue like this. Not too many, but there were those, anytime you walked into the store, they were holding either a tillim to save it. You walked in, they put it down, they served you, went back to the tillim and the safe. Basically, they always used to say that the quicker I pick up my safe, the sooner the next customer comes. Because the age of Hara doesn't want me to be busy with Sefer, so it's push it. It's good economics, <laughs> but not everybody had that experience. Not everybody has that sensitivity. That's called Havidim Matz, Beis Havidim Zulos, influencing other people. What are the pshat influencing other people? Beis the dibor b'yani eset. While you're discussing matters of business affairs, yisabev adibor, you should lead the conversation. Lesaper is a sipur technique, and lead it in a direction which will allow you to tell a story, and the story 
will have a toichen, a badait, a meaning, not just stamas, they are maise, a maise that brings out an Indian that teaches something, that inspires something. Velim say ilo vesima. And to find a cause, direct or indirect, le'ede, to encourage the customer, al dvar limud, to learn teiro, okay, to present himself, but you meet people. Right, the Rebbe says, you think you're meeting people for panasa, you're meeting people for panasa ruchnes. So the male, the eight is, when you meet a person, the conversation should reflect that mission as well. And in more recent years, the Rebbe, of course, added to this something even more extreme, which is the idea of Sheva Mitzvah Nenech. When you meet a goy in business, you think you're meeting the goy to discuss business. In fact, you're meeting to this goy to teach him by the Eibishter. And the Rebbe always says that when Yidin in business will teach goy by the Eibishter, not only will it not make their business prospects more difficult, it'll make their business prospects much easier. I, I didn't see Rabbi Sachs' speech. It's a week from the Kinnis. Rabbi Sachs made a speech, the chief rabbi of England, and it's apparently a uysing of England. Wonder about it. I mean, everyone is talking about it. I haven't seen it. But he says many different things. He tells the story of how the Rebbe Poshet he wasn't even through when he met the Rebbe for the first time. And his whole life was guided by the Rebbe. He had the wisdom and the humility to listen. And the Rebbe made him into a giant. Mamish into a giant. He's a chief rabbi of England, which is a very serious position. It's very serious because he has influence on Goyim. But in any case, this Rabbi Sachs, amongst the many things he says, he says that when a Jew acts like a Jew, Goyim respect him. When Jews act like Jews, Goyim respect him. But when Jews don't act like Jews, the Goyim don't know what to do with them. In other words, it's exactly the opposite of what for so long was thought to be the solution to Yiddish Atzadis. You know, assimilation and so forth and so on. But I want to just mention that I heard, I heard, I heard this more than once actually, that the Rebbe said, this is very sharp for Werther, but Kach Shamaiti, the Rebbe said, had Yidin before the war talked to Goyim, but Sheva Mitzvah, B'nai Neach, there would not have been a Holocaust. If Yidin would talk, in other words, if Yidin would not have lived such lives of isolation, where the Yidin, the Goy had no Kesha, that's how they lived. They lived in complete isolation. Totally up, isn't it? And I suppose, it wasn't necessarily by the Jewish people's choosing. A lot of it had to do with anti-Semitism and other factors. But had taught Goyim how to serve the Eivishter, they would have made them push it into better people. And the Rebbe says, a person who's involved in business, this is the real reason. It's a panos